Hello everybody and welcome back to another My Porch Prints tutorials. This is Kira and today I'm going to be showing you how we are going to put together these little Halloween candy card kits. Um, this kit comes with multiple things in it including several sheets of various candies. This is just a few of the ones that are in the kit. Um, it also comes with some little spooky word tags that we'll be using when we make ours today. And I did go ahead and use a Cricut to cut mine out but you could cut out just a a few by hand that you want to use in your little uh, pockets that's entirely up to you we have various colors and types of candy so lots of variety to choose from and then it comes with the template for the uh, like candy pocket itself which is like like a little candy bag is what we're kind of going for and it's made so that you can just fold the bag in half and have the print on both sides front and back it also comes with a pocket that you can fill with candy and then this little sort of like tie off at the top that you can use and I'll show you how to use that if you want but we're also going to be showing you how to make them out of fabric today so um, I've gone ahead and chosen a couple of different ribbons some sort of thin lacy ones as well as this wired one just because I wanted to test it out in the end I actually didn't really like the wire I thought it would help kind of hold the shape but it, in fact it was just a little too thick and didn't work properly um, so I ended up cutting up the wire and only using the ribbon but I'll kind of talk about that a little more later. All right, next you're also gonna need some thinner ribbon that kind of match the same color as your wider ribbon. And then for the pattern itself, mine looks a little different. I had a, an early prototype for mine, but you're gonna wanna print your uh, pattern on a piece of white cardstock, and then you're gonna run it through the printer again with a sort of pattern paper of your choice. Now I'm using mine from the Autumn Academia kit because that's what I had already available, so I decided to use those up, but you could use papers from any kit, any Halloween kit, any sort of paper you want. Um, it kind of just depends what look you're going for. And I went ahead and cut mine out here and as you can see they just kind of fold in half like this and you might have a little bit of white showing around your edges. If you do that's okay. You could go ahead and use something like um, some distress ink like here I have this black soot color or you could also use a sharpie which is actually what I ended up using. I thought it was a little bit easier for getting like down in the crack of the card. And then I went ahead and cut out all of my pockets and I just sort of swapped them around because I thought it was a little bit cuter. I kind of liked the variation, so that's what I did. And I'm actually going to be adding a border to mine using a sewing machine. And because I don't want it showing in the back, it's important to glue your pocket on and sew before you glue the entire candy bag shut. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Just using a bit of Fabri-Tac because um, it's not water-based and it won't wrinkle. So we use it for most of our projects here. And I'm just going to glue my pockets onto the bottom half of the candy bag like this. And then before gluing it shut, I'm gonna take it to my machine and add just kind of like a zigzag pattern around the bottom half of the pocket, just like this. And you can see it does show through the other side. So that's why we wanted to wait here. Um, and I did add some glue to those like loose ends of the thread just to make sure that they don't pop out. And then now we can go ahead and glue the candy bag shut. Let's so just go ahead, add a little glue here, glue this shut just like this. Make sure we get it nice and sandwiched tight like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take that Sharpie and go along those edges. And be careful not to mark off the edges like I did. If you do, I just went ahead and added a couple of extra ones and I'm kind of making it look, you know, like wrinkles in the bag, sort of. I don't think it's too noticeable, but just be careful. <laughs> And once that's done, um, you actually can go ahead and add your topper now if you'd like to. So if you're using the paper topper, um, mine doesn't have a pattern on it because I didn't print this just from the template. But if uh, once you've got yours, it should have the same pattern. Um, and you can just fold it and glue it front and back and then sandwich it in between the pieces uh, of your little candy bag here like that. Or you could glue it more towards the top of the front and just sort of add like a little bow or some ribbon or something like that to kind of complete that candy bag illusion. And that is entirely up to you if you want to do that or if you want to, you can try these little um, fabric, sort of fabric fan topper that we made for it to kind of complete the illusion of like a fabric candy bag here. So I already went ahead and did this one off camera just to sort of test uh, how I was going to do this since I've never done this before. I wasn't even sure if it would work, but you know, it worked out okay. 
And for this, I just cut a portion of ribbon um, and I ended up like folding it into a fan shape here. And I'm kind of just getting an idea for how wide I want my fan to be. So I just folded the fabric piece back and forth like this to create like a little fan effect. And I'm just kind of pinching it at the bottom here to see if it's going to be, you know, the right sort of size for what I'm looking for. And once I thought it looked right, I'm gonna go ahead and set that piece of fabric aside and using a micro hole punch I'm going to punch a small hole in the very top center of my card you could use an awl or a needle or anything to make this little hole that's up to you but you're gonna want that because it'll make things a little bit easier in a minute here all right and then you're gonna want to find a thin needle a smaller thinner needle will be a little bit easier for this project and some thread you're gonna want about a foot maybe uh, probably two feet of thread since we're going to be folding that thread in half and then I'm gonna tie like a little knot at the end of my thread just like this so that it doesn't slip out while sewing and now we can go ahead and make our stitch so you can try to go through the entire thing at once which is what I tried to do because I'm impatient but it was really difficult and I don't recommend so instead what we're going to be doing is doing like a little sort of back and forth sort of weaving stitch um, as close to the bottom of your piece of ribbon as you can get without it you know tearing the fabric so you know I left maybe a quarter of an inch towards the bottom of my piece of fabric here and I'm just taking the fabric and sort of weaving the needle through it and this is going to create that exact same fan effect as if you folded it it's the same thing and we're just kind of going back and forth here through the entire piece of ribbon if you want to you can skip ahead but I just wanted to make sure people could see exactly what they're doing um, if they're trying to you know copy this here so I'm just gonna keep weaving back and forth and sort of just pushing the fabric onto the needle a little bit more as I go to make room kind of keeping things sandwiched together here cautious try not to prick yourself as you go all right one more little fold here and there you go, you can see that that kind of holds the fabric in that same fan shape that we made earlier. And now you can go ahead and pull the needle through and this stitch is going to hold your fan together. So go ahead and do that. And this is much easier than trying to force it through the whole thing, I promise. <laughs> All right, and once you've pulled that through, I'm just gonna wrap the thread around the bottom half of the fan just to make sure it really holds. And then I'm going to cut my fab, or not my fabric, sorry, my uh, thread here. And I'm gonna take these two ends and I'm just gonna tie a knot using those two ends to make sure it stays. Cut off those extra edges and there you go. Now you've got your fan. And now we're going to take more thread, again, tied in a knot, same as before. And I'm just going to uh, th thread the needle through the bottom portion of our fan here around the center portion of it and then we're gonna go through that hole that we made in our candy bag like this and we're going to go back through the the back of our fan and it's again we're kind of going towards that center bottom it's okay if it's not perfectly centered just try your best so kind of hold your fan where you want it and then we're going to go back through that center bottom portion of the fan try to find sort of a nice easy spot to thread the needle through and then um, once you've got that you're gonna pull your needle through and it's gonna create a stitch which is going to hold the fan onto the candy bag and again this is kind of the more complex way of decorating your fan I think it looks really pretty when it's done but if you want to just have it easy you could use the paper topper that's entirely up to you just whatever you want to do this is just kind of something fun and different you can try and it looks kind of cute all right, so you can see that stitch holds really well, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing a couple of times. So going through the center, the bottom, going through that hole in the bag, and I'm just gonna go through the front and then through the back and just do that a couple of times to really make sure that stitch is gonna hold. All right, just like that. And then when I'm done, I'm going to again cut my thread and then take those ends and just kind of tie a little knot, cutting off any loose tails here. And I'm going to be grabbing some of that thin matching ribbon and I'm going to tie it around the back like this, sort of going underneath the fan's edges here, just like that. And I'm going to just tie one knot here 
And you can leave your tails as long as you want. I left them long at first and then ended up trimming them later, so that's entirely up to you how long you want them. Just make sure that kind of goes under the fan here. That's going to give you like a nice sort of smooth fall to the ribbons here so they're not sticking out at weird angles. And then I'm taking some of these satin bows that we bought off Amazon. We have those linked in our supplies down below if you're interested. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to use them just to kind of hide that stitch we made. And a quick um, sort of tip, if you're having trouble getting your fan to display properly, you can actually take your needle and go through the edges of your fan and then go back through that center hole and stitch the same way. And it'll kind of pull these edges of the fan down and sort of splay them a little bit more. So you can see I kind of did that here and it creates this sort of triple stitch. And to tie off your stitch, you can just go under the stitch like this with the needle and then through this little loop here and that creates kind of like a cleaner tie off. All right, and if you want to, if you don't have satin ribbons, you can just take the ribbon and tie it in a bow underneath the little fan like that. Um, it's entirely up to you. I went ahead and used my satin bows because I thought they looked a little cleaner, so that's just what I'm doing for mine. It's entirely up to you. And now for the fun part, we can go ahead and fill our pocket with the ephemera candy. Again, you can use any ephem ephemera you want in here, or you could put maybe like, I don't know, some money or something if you're giving it away as like a Halloween card, it's up to you. Um, I went ahead and filled it with the candy going with like larger, taller pieces in the back and smaller, thinner pieces in front. And then I'm using some of those spooky words along with some scrap pieces from when I cut out my uh, candy cards. Just um, using a little bit of puff tape to make sort of like a 3D label on the front. And here you can see I'm trimming off those tails a little bit shorter just to kind of make things a little bit cleaner and a little more manageable for me. Just like that. And then continuing to fill with just different candy pieces that I liked. All right, and this is what they look like when they are all done. So kind of a cute little, uh, like maybe a Halloween card you could give away or like an invitation to a Halloween party or a party favor, or maybe just something to give to somebody who likes to craft for Halloween, just to give them some fun ephemera, anything like that. So anyway, um, I hope that you enjoyed this fun little crafting project. Thanks so much for joining me and we will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.